This is gonna be a little different video than we typically do, but look around, man. It is a gorgeous sunny day coming in at 32 degrees. No snow on the ground, sunshine. Man, I am loving it. Starlink's doing good, Skipper's doing good. Everyone's doing good. So anyways, in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about behind the scenes of YouTube. There's a guy named Dave Whipple. He's got a channel called Bush Radical. Um, and he put a, out a video called Off Grid is a Lie. And so I wanted to talk about some of the comments that we get and talk a little bit about his video as well. So let's get started. So one of the questions that we get is um, like what production company do we use? Um, and the truth is uh, me, I'm the production company. Um, and, and so here's what I wanted to kind of point out is that um, the stuff that I do that I film is the stuff that I do every day anyways you know it's just the stuff that it, it's not anything special i don't go out of the way to do anything you know out of the ordinary that i wouldn't typically do but when i film it it does take a few extra steps and so i'm thought i would bring you along with making a uh, a, a shot of a video and then show you like what it looks like in real life and what it looks like to film uh, a, a shot so Let's get, let's, uh, we're gonna uh, put some fresh chicken water for out for the chickens, so let's do that. So I've got a GoPro set up right here, holding a GoPro in my hand. So this is what me just typically getting water would look like. Press the play button here, or the record button, and we're recording. Play button here, or the record button, and we're recording. There you go. So that's what it typically looks like when I just go in and change the water out. Now, when if, if I'm gonna film me changing the water, this is this is what it would look more like. Changing the water, this is this is what it would look more like. This is the scene. I walk through. This is me closing the door now. There we go. Closing the door from a different angle. Walking in to the chicken coop. There we go, now we're walking in. These are all called jump cuts. Me walking around the corner with the water. There you go. That's the YouTube magic. Stuff that I do every day, but I like telling a story. Speaking of telling a story, the lens should always be clean. So I like telling a story. It's not like I'm doing stuff that I wouldn't typically be doing anyways. I just try to put a more interesting spin on it. So the audience uh, interest rate typically is no more than 10 seconds. For younger folks, it's uh, even less. But luckily for me, my audience is my age and older. So you guys are hanging around for 20 seconds of a, of a still shot. Now when I'm talking, Talking uh, typically doesn't lose interest, but scenes do lose interest. So I try to keep them between 10 and 15 seconds. And that's why you add these things they call jump cuts.
So I just finished editing that clip. So in reality, it takes me about a minute to get chickens new water. Uh, it took me eight minutes to film everything and that eight minutes condensed down into a one minute little video clip of me getting the water. And uh, it took me about 40 minutes to uh, edit. So uh, what in real life takes a, uh, a minute, uh, turned out to take about uh, uh, 50 minutes, almost an hour to put on film. So that's a little bit of the, the behind the scenes of uh, the YouTube magic. So does it take longer to film videos? I mean, if you just set a camera up and just started shooting, then probably not. But if you're trying to make things entertaining, tell a story, add some B-roll. Uh, B-roll, let me, let me show you. B-roll is just footage that doesn't involve anything specific. Like, uh, I think I'm going to open this with like a sun sunrise scene uh that would be b-roll and hold on one second let me see if i can get this here i thought this was cool it's uh steam coming off this big log as the sun warms it up i don't know if it's coming off good in the camera but uh to me it's interesting so i'll film it and we'll see if uh if we can use it as b-roll so that's it for me i make jump cuts do a little talking film some b-roll and try to wrap it all into a story that uh, hopefully people enjoy watching so the production company uh, i think i answered that that's me i edit all the videos some people when you get into larger channels they'll hire editors out but i enjoy this was like a hobby for me. I mean, I enjoyed photography in high school and uh, I enjoy, this is like an artistic outlet. It lets me, um, you know, just kind of do something, do something else besides sit around and read a book. I'm not much of a reader, so, but I am a YouTube uh, consumer. And so I thought making YouTube videos would be kind of right up my alley as a hobby. So let's talk a little bit about equipment. The equipment that I use is, uh, for my production company is, uh, is, is not too high speed. So uh, I do have a DSLR camera. It's a, a Canon 80D. This guy right here. I use that if I'm wanting to shoot like long distance. Like if I ever go to like where I can see an eagle but it's too far away for the, the um, GoPro to shoot, then I'll take this uh, with like a 300 millimeter lens so I can get a little sh closer shot. Or if like last time we were in Haynes and there were bears feeding on salmon in the streams, I took it so I didn't have to get as close to the bears and I could uh, get the shot. Hey, Skipper. No. Skipper's down there trying to play with Rocky, our rooster. So anyways, I do have a DSLR. I hardly ever use it because typically we don't have sunshine, we have rain here. And that's why I switched to the GoPro. Uh, and the GoPros are 4K, this is 1080p. So the GoPros actually shoot better video now uh, than, the, uh, than the DSLR does. I've got several GoPros, uh, several, I've got a few. I think I've got a, uh, I've got a seven, I've got a nine and I've got a 10. Uh, it just helps when you, like when we went salmon fishing, uh, I gave all three of us a GoPro. We all three shot footage. And then when we got back, um, me, Steve Funk and Steve Olmstead, I uh, acquired all the film and put it all together into a good, a good video. I think it's a good video, but um, you can watch it up there and you can tell me if you think it's a good video. I've got this little mini DJI, that little mini DJI drone, um, it, I've had two Maverick Pros. Uh, I've crashed both of them. And uh, this one was 500 bucks. Uh, so if I crash this one, it's not going to um, make me cry like the, um, the more <laughs> expensive drones did. I think those were like, at the time, like a thousand bucks a pop. These are little clamps that the GoPros fit on. Man, I, I love these. I use these for, for basically everything. I, uh, I'll show you some of the stuff I just, I carry a little picaroon on the four-wheeler and then I just uh, drive that picaroon into a, like a tree stump or a round that's staked on the ground or pretty much anything that's wood you can drive it into. Then you can just clamp that GoPro on it and adjust it to where you want it. Skipper, get out of there. And then you can make your shot. 
And I've got these uh, these two, um, those are lapel mics. They're uh, Rode Wireless Go 2s. Uh, I, the GoPros are really great. They work great in the, in the um, rain, but the sound on them really sucks. So um, I, I bought these lapels because uh, so the, I just was getting horrible sound. And, and you know, it's, if, it's rough shooting a video, started going and start editing the video and then realizing that either a you have no footage or your sound sounds absolutely uh, horrible so about those lapel mics um i think that was around 250 to 400 bucks something like that so what i'm trying to get across is youtube takes time and it takes money now you can film it all on your uh on your camera on your phone but um, I'm trying to produce more high quality videos uh, as entertainment. I mean, I don't really do how-to stuff. People say that they learn a lot from our channel, but I'm not here. To, I'm, my main focus is to entertain uh, more so than um, educate. Although I, it's nice that I can educate and entertain at the same time. Okay, uh, honorable mention, I just, I just bought this. Uh, it's a little tiny umbrella that you clamp to your tripod. That way, if I want to use the DSLR, the, the DSLR, <laughs> that way if I want to use the more expensive camera out in the rain, I can pop that little umbrella and it will be shielded from the thing. It also plays into the lapel mics because if you have a camera under an umbrella, all you'll hear is the rain hitting the umbrella. So then the lapel mics come out very nice because all you can hear then is what the uh, the, the two people are talking about. I bought the two, the two um, lapel mics because obviously me and my wife are the dynamic duo out here. So I figured we needed two as opposed to just one. Now the lapel mics, I will say that they're a little more difficult because you actually have to sync up the audio with the video as as if you're just using a camera like the DSLR the DSRL or the GoPros then it's just straight uh, camera and audio are all in the same uh, in the same shot you do the same thing over and over again yeah, of course I do. It's my life. You know, I mean, it's like telling a guy that works a nine to five job that they do the same thing over and over again. Yeah, you get up, you go to work, you come home, you spend time with the family, you go to bed and then you repeat. Except for my life, uh, I don't go to a nine to five job. My job is basically what I want to do. And one of the things that I like to do is to make videos. But with all that said is I break my life up into four different sections. That is spring, summer fall and winter i have recently acquired this beautiful uh, dry erase board <laughs> what does the dry erase board so basically along the along the uh the year i'll jot down things that i want to cover on the on the um channel but i have things that i always cover every single year and that is a splitting firewood because we have we burn a lot of firewood uh, we go fishing, so I do got halibut fishing down there. We go coho fishing, so I have fishing down there for coho. And we've, we, me, Steve Funk, and Steve um, Olmstead have all started the, uh, the annual trip to Sweetheart Creek where we go cast net fishing for um, red um, sockeye. So that's on there as well. Now I've got on here in August, uh, we're gonna be canning our um, sockeye, so we're gonna do some canning videos. There's a bear sanctuary, like a bear viewing sanctuary called Pat Creek. I was trying to do that last year. I'm gonna to try to do that this year. We're gonna try that in August. And then we roll into September, uh, starting in fall, and that is moose, duck, and deer season. And so that takes us all the way from September into December. Um, and then, and then uh, in wintertime, basically, is if, it, if it's a nice day like today, I would probably be out splitting wood um, but the, the, the big thing in wintertime is that we just kind of basically survive in the winter. Nothing special really happens. If I have wood here in the cabin, we'll do a little, um, a little work inside the cabin. Um, but I don't have any wood here right now. So that's why we're doing this. That also plays into the part of, uh, when are you ever going to finish your cabin? Well, the <laughs> one of the questions is, you're rich. You got to be rich to do this. 
Well, I, I'm not rich. Uh, I'll go into that a little later, but the reason why we haven't finished the cabin is because basically our goal is we save a little money, we do a little bit on the on the homestead. We either A, do something outside, or we do work on the cabin. We've, we've switched from cabin to basically uh, outside work, but we will eventually go back inside and start working on the cabin again. But basically, we save money, we do some work, and then we stop. Um, but that's why the cabin's not finished, is because we aren't in debt on the cabin, so we are not going to go into debt to like take out a loan to finish it. We just save up some money and then do the cabin. So I'm rich. Yes, I am rich. I mean, dude, it, it depends on what you what your definition of rich is. I, I feel like a blessed man. I've got a wonderful wife, two great dogs. I'm living the absolute best life that I think I possibly can live. In that aspect, I do feel like I am rich. And now here's where Dave Whipple's video came out. He's talking about off-grid living is a lie because you see a lot of people who obviously have a lot of money. And, and, and in some aspects, yes, I have money. I'm not dirt poor, uh, full disclosure. I retired, I spent 21 years in the military, I retired from the military, and I get about a $2,500 check a month from the military. I make a small little bit of money, well it's not even small, the more YouTube videos you make, the larger you get, the more money you make with views, and so uh, last year I think I made $15,000 on YouTube. Now let me, uh, let me, pre let me, <laughs> with a caveat on that. I've been making YouTube videos for seven years, and in the total of those seven years, I've made $35,000. So if you're looking at getting rich on YouTube, uh, and you're going the route I'm going, obviously <laughs> you're not you're not uh, young and attractive, uh, and you're uh, you know you're you're not in it for the for the money per se. Uh, you're not going to get rich. It's not a get rich quick scheme. 1% of people who make put videos out on YouTube ever reach 10,000 subscribers. Now we're coming up on 40,000 subscribers. I feel blessed, but typically you're not even you're not even a, like a full-time YouTuber until you hit 100,000 subscribers. Uh, whether we'll ever get there, I have no clue. But as long as as I enjoy making these videos, I'm going to continue to make them. But um, yeah, it was never. I never started making videos in the um with the thought behind i'm gonna get rich doing this that was not my intention ever my main first videos were just to show my family and friends what we were doing out here in in alaska so am i rich uh i'm better off than some for sure but no i'm, I'm not rich i make uh <clears throat> i make about what the um Probably less than what the average medium income uh, fa family gets. So that goes into uh, what Mr. Whipple was talking about, is uh, there needs to be more transparency on how people make money. I mean, uh, no, it ain't nobody's business on how much money we make, but I, that's 100% transparent, that uh, how much money I actually make. It's a decent living. And I get a little bit of disability because if you serve in the army or military or coast guard for more than, you know, if, you serve, if you're if you making a career, you're going to get banged up along the way. And at the end of your service or whenever you get out, you can uh, tell them what's wrong. You know, I've got three herniated discs in my neck, three herniated discs in my back. Uh, I've got just ailments that I've accumulated along 21 years. And so the military will, the, the veterans, uh, the VA will um, compensate you for some of the, um, the things that you acquired along your, your military career. And so that's what the disability does. Disability is cool. It's tax free. You don't have to pay any taxes on it. So that's awful nice. But speaking of taxes, that's where you that's that's what we're going to go into next is tax. So taxes and YouTubers are in it just for the money. Uh, no, that's not true. If I was in it for the money, I would have stopped making YouTube videos about six years ago because at that point in time, I I had I hadn't made a dime on YouTube. I haven't I didn't make a dime until about three years into uh, f making YouTube videos. So I wasn't in it for the money, but. Here's where taxes come into it. At one point in time in your YouTube career, you're going to have to realize either A, you're going to have to stop or you're going to start making money and you're going to have to switch from thinking I'm making videos as a hobby into I'm making videos as a, uh, as a job. And so that's, that's where I'm at now. So last year I got dinged on taxes pretty good because I'm, uh, last year I had made like $12,000, which is incredible 
you know, just for making videos. Uh, so I decided to hire a tax person. So I don't know how it's going to happen. I'm getting all my tax stuff together right now. But that's when you have to look at things like a business and really start focusing on what money is going into your YouTube channel and what money is coming out of your YouTube channel. Now, I think I've demonstrated that, you know, what, what would take me three minutes to fill up uh, a thing of water for the chickens. If I make a video, just just that little second, you know, 10 second clip can take me five minutes. So to do that throughout a 20 to 30 minute video, you're talking, I mean, it's easily for me to spend 20 to 40 hours on, on YouTube, you know, as a job, as a job. So should YouTubers get paid for the services they provide? Now, they either give you education, they give you entertainment, but uh, long story short, in my opinion, if you're, if you're working and you're spending your own money and you're spending your own time to do something, then you're either A, love it and you're volunteering your work, your, you know, your services, or you're treating it as a job and you should be compensated for it. So that, that's, that's kind of where I'm at now is, yes, I love making videos. Yes, I am making money on the videos. Uh, and I also have switched my mindset from it's a hobby to um, t treating it as a, a part-time job or a full-time job, really. So, um, yeah, I'm, like I said, this is, this is Dave Whipples um, going on his thing on transparency, 100% transparent. Uh, I used to just make videos for fun. Now I'm making videos as a, uh, as a career, as a job. Not really a career, I'm retired. So I'll link the video up there. Seven years ago, I made a uh, intro into our life. Uh, you know, my first video that I, uh, not the first video that I ever published on YouTube. I used to do some rock crawling videos, but I just, I made them private because, you know, it doesn't jive with, uh, but anyways, I was just making it for my friends. We'd go rock crawling up in Colorado. And, and so I made some videos just to, you know, for entertaining, for, for us to go back and watch. But yeah, seven years ago, I made that first video. I had no clue uh, where, I, where that I would be here today making this video, but here we are. Uh, anyways, I mean, this is kind of crazy. I, I just wanted to talk about some of the comments that we get, cover them. They typically are, they're very interested or they're coming off snobby and hateful. So um, that, that's why I'm answering the questions. So we're gonna walk back here to where our next shot's gonna be. But yeah, my YouTube channel really didn't take off. I was, uh, I'd retired from the army. I started working at a gold mine. And uh, so I worked at the gold mine. I was there for two weeks. Well, actually, at first I was there for three weeks and I had a week off. Or I had two weeks, I had two weeks on and one week off. And then we went to a two weeks on and two weeks off. And eventually I had enough money where I could, I had, I had basically paid everything off. My my cabin was clear, my truck was clear, I, I had absolutely no debt. And so after we saved a little bit of money, I was like, well, well I get my retirement money, I'm just gonna en enjoy life. And so that was about four years ago, and that's um, when we made the big plunge. And I stopped working completely and started making more YouTube videos. And the more videos I made, the faster our channel grew. So this also goes into the, I'm assuming the you're rich and what, and this also is a topic that Dave Whipple covered was, I don't understand how these YouTubes could have big ticket items. Uh, and I watched his uh, first video and then I watched his deep dive video. I'm not a subscriber to him, but I do know of him and his wife. They were on this show called Alone. I've never watched the show alone, but I know that it's like survival stuff. Um, but yes, uh, so as far as rich, rich people typically don't poop in an outhouse. Uh, but what he said was, I don't understand how these people have big ticket items like tractors. And I, and I didn't take Dave's video as a personal ding on me, but I thought I would, I know people have these questions. So full disclosure, I was born in 1970 of May and uh, I'm a middle-aged guy. I bought this tractor right here behind me because my back was hurting. <laughs> Basically, that's the truth. I knew that if I had bought a tractor, I could get a lot more accomplished in a shorter amount of time. So I spent 
the 20, I think it was $27,000 bought a brand new tractor and I have not regretted it a single minute. The only thing that I think out of all of this that I would have done differently was I would probably have worked at the mine for one extra year and I would have bought the tractor from the very beginning. This thing has saved me so much time. So, um, where he was coming from was him and his wife built a small cabin. Then they built the, you know, they sold it and built a larger cabin. They sold that and built a larger. They just kept working their ways up. And that may be where he has the disconnect was uh, I, I spent my whole career in the military. I didn't have to build cabins. I slept in tents. But now that I am out here in a cabin, I'm a middle-aged man. We're probably a long... A long <laughs> We're probably along the, the, the same age, uh, you know? So, you know, the, the, I do things that now make my life easier. I brought this old Jeep that we had already owned in Colorado. I brought it out to uh, the cabin because if the four-wheeler ever failed, I wanted a backup. And so the Jeep is here to help us pull the boat out of the water. The tractor can pull the new boat out of the water and the ATV is to help us to get our groceries from the boat to our cabin. Bada bing, bada bing. I think I answered why people have tractors. The, the, the tractor has been uh, invaluable to us. I mean, you just can't, it was the best money I'd ever, I'd ever spent and if I had to do it again, I'd do it in a heartbeat. And then I wanna hit one more thing. Uh, that he talked about on his video, and that was a helicopter. Now, we've never used a helicopter to bring anything out here, but obviously our Jeep and our landing, uh, our, our tractor, we've used a landing craft to bring out the, uh, the vehicles because obviously they wouldn't fit in our boat. Now, for us, we, we put every single bit of lumber, every, all of our groceries, everything that we use out here has went into our boat with the exception of some big ticket items which we use the landing craft. Now, I don't know if that saves you money, but if you're just, if you're just uh, saving money and, and doing work and saving money and doing work, then it, it fits in a lot better than, than buying all your lumber all at once, putting it on the landing craft and bringing it out here. Now, now what he said in his video was, I seen a guy chopper uh, building supplies out in a helicopter. Now, for those of you who are new here, we live on an island, and so there's only two ways to get your stuff out here, and that's either a landing craft, and I've seen two separate people uh, get their lumber, uh, the uh, helicopter sling loaded their lumber over here and dropped it. Now, I don't know exactly how much the, the helicopter cost. I'm assuming it's around 2,000 bucks, and the landing craft is about 1,000 bucks. Now with the landing craft, you're gonna have to uh, get all the stuff off of the landing craft and onto the beach, and then you have to hump it up to your cabin. Now, uh, when you sling load a, uh, your lumber supplies, you can have that stuff dropped right at your building location. So is it worth the extra thousand bucks or however much money it is? I don't know. We've, I've never brought building material out on a, on a, um, helicopter or on the landing craft but i know when we put our mooring system in we're probably going to have to hire that landing craft again to drop our anchor because the anchor is probably going to be two thousand pounds or more depending on what we get so anyways the, that goes into uh bush radicals video on helicopters and and why i have a tractor because i'm old and uh or older about his age and yeah i don't um I, my, Taking a shovel and digging out a root system by hand and then trying to put a come along on it. And no, I'm over those days. I, I had enough money to buy a tractor and that's exactly what I did. So I've never made any of these. Look, look at Skipper, a, uh, a little oil thing washed up on shore. Skipper and Raven love finding stuff on the beach and then playing with it. Anyways, I've never made like a re or like a response video to anybody. And I was already gonna, I had already had this video in the back of my mind, so I just jotted down some questions that I wanted to answer. So I hope I don't come off as, as like I was upset with Dave Whipple because I'm not. I mean, uh, I, there's channels out there. Man, there's tons of channels. I've got, I've got my own concerns with channels uh, that, that, that I think that are either A, fake, completely fake, like they don't live where they say they live, 
or I, here's my listen here's my other thing i'm gonna be 100% transparent the videos with the people that are um like i said earlier me and uh, i'm not a uh my uh, youthful looks have uh, escaped me. I'm, you know, <laughs> I'm just not there no more. But uh, when you see those clickbait thumbnails of a half-naked girl, and I'm just like, oh, come on. But you know, if it works, whatever, whatever, you know, makes them happy. But it, that, even when I was younger, I don't think that would uh, that would have been my style because I've never, you know, I've never been about stuff like that so anyways uh this is not my traditional video traditional videos we make is us fishing and hunting and just living the best life we can but uh man i've gotten a few well i, I get negative comments uh I, people you know they can you feel free leave a negative comment uh i was in the army for 21 years uh any um any feelings that i ever had uh the army took out of me <laughs> So, so you're not you're not gonna hurt my feelings is basically what I'm trying to say. Uh, yeah, um, but like I said, I don't have any any qualm with the, the Bush Radical or him and his wife. Uh, they're great people. Um, I just wanted to show you the other aspect that uh, they started off young. I'm starting off in my in my middle age. So uh, yeah, there's there's probably why there's a difference. And I also you know just had a bunch of questions. Uh, that I thought would be answered. I mean, these the questions that I got were really um, um, they came off kind of um, rude, but uh, yeah, I mean, people have the, these questions, and so I figured I'd answer them. Um, so, we, uh, long story short, is would would I make videos today if I weren't making money on them? And the answer to that question is still today is simply. Yes, I would. I probably wouldn't make uh, weekly videos. I'd probably make like a video a month just because that's stuff that I enjoy doing. Because um, like I said, after I, uh, you know, I'll spend several hours or even multiple days sh shooting a, uh, a video and then you've got to spend like four to eight to some, you know, sometimes even multi days uh, editing the video. It depends on how much footage you shoot. But at, at, at the end of the day, you got to take all the SD cards throw them onto a computer and then splice it all together and that's also time consuming. So stuff like the Woodstove Wednesdays and the live stream that we just did for the first time, super easy because it's just like a sit down, push a button and then just upload it straight into uh, you know to YouTube. But for the videos that I try to make that are more entertaining, it is more time consuming, but I enjoy trying to make good quality videos that people are interested in watching. So anyways, hopefully I didn't come off arrogant because that's not what I was trying to do. Basically, I was just trying to um, answer the questions uh, in the simplest way I knew how to do it. And so that's what we did. Anyways, I'm trying to live my freest life. I hope you guys try to live your freest life. Thank you for watching and we will see you next week.